And then once we started gaining their trust more, we could start asking different questions and started getting them to talk about their racism, how they're homophobic, about, they call it disciplining their children, but they're literally beating their children with rods. It is uh, known to be a white supremacy cult. Like they literally straight up told me black people are only on this earth to be slaves to white people. They also and said that the... The Jews deserved to die in the Holocaust. Yeah. And basically, Hitler was just disciplining the Jews. And Ben captured all that on a spy watch. He What's up, guys? Welcome to episode 137 of Dropouts. Um, this week, we got Danny and Ben, the boys. Woo! Yeah, the boys. Uh, this might be one of our most wild podcasts ever. Um, to give you a little precursor, these two fine gentlemen infiltrated a cult that, um, let's just say, almost took over the world and they stopped it. Let's hit some <laughs> intro music. Yeah. The Death Wish Duo. The Death Wish Duo. Dude, I love that. I like this music. Did you write yeah. the song? Uh, he he I did. made it. You wrote that? I really like that song, actually. That's Thank really you. That gets me psyched. <laughs> Hell Let's yeah. Let's go. I appreciate okay, so that. can you guys maybe give everybody a little background of what you do, why you do it, and then we can jump into your newest excursion? Do you want to go so, first? Well, well, this guy's like the cult infiltrator. Like, I learned so much from him, so I, don't, you sh I think you should start. Oh, I should start? Okay. Basically, Danny and I are YouTubers, so we're not the biggest YouTubers ever, but... Well, we, we do a lot of things that get like taken down from YouTube, I guess. Like he lit himself <laughs> on fire, got like two strikes, pretty much almost got his channel taken down. I've almost gotten my channel taken down every series I do. <laughs> and yeah, basically, I guess my channel, the way you would describe it is I find things that are just like terrible in this world and like, like Scientology, like evil cults, like, like pyramid schemes. And I go in with like secret cameras and I'm like, okay, I'm going to like take these guys down pretty much. And then we go in and we take them down pretty much. Oh no, I spilled <laughs> oh, no. five minutes, 30 <laughs> seconds of the podcast. Here we go. And cut. <laughs> Ben. You're gonna cut this to make it look like I peed my pants. Yeah, Everyone's gonna be like, oh, why is he just he just wet the couch when <laughs> you're gonna cut out the I just spilled my drink. Oh, thank you so much. Wow, <laughs> you have a lovely assistant. Oh yeah, she's uh she's the best. Jared keeps trying to hit on her, but we're trying no, to keep I don't. away. Jared, Shut you're in love. It's it's not a big deal. Um, okay, so you're the one that kind of started infiltrating systems you think are broken to yeah. show the darkness yeah. in between. I was doing more stunts at the time, and then um, I did my first like infiltration with Ben, and I learned so much from him. But we we went into this cult with like secret spy cameras, so I had spy glasses. He was wearing a spy watch. We had a spy water bottle, a spy pen, and uh, we just made up fake stories spy about car keys. Yeah, uh, spy car keys, and they just fully believed our fake backstories. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Where on earth do you get these things? Because like I remember, do you remember the like the spy toys growing up? I thought those were the coolest things, but I just thought that's what they were. They were toys. I didn't think people actually had them. So on Amazon, a spy camera is about 45 to $50 that's per camera. It? Yeah. Yeah. Like a nice like camera, you think of like, oh, it's probably like thousands of dollars. Like if it's going to be small and hidden, this guy's probably even more. Yeah. No, they're like 40, 50 bucks. They're like little like Happy Meal toys. I'm, trying, much. I'm trying to look on them and see where the spy camera is now. I know you got one on you somewhere. <laughs> no, not right now. <laughs> I'd I say mean, the same thing. That would have been funny though. You probably could. I mean, they have like the spy watches, the car keys we're using. Those are pretty good. Uh, the spy water bottles, you can kind of just put on the side and like, it's not even on you. Just put it down on a table and then you can be having a conversation over here and they're like looking at you for like where's the spy camera at meanwhile it's on the table across the room so you guys infiltrated what's it called 12 tribes yeah 12 tribes and then they have a restaurant called the yellow deli okay but honestly before we get in that do you want to give a brief breakdown of what you did in Scientology and then we can that will kind of give a precursor of oh yeah pretty much I just moved to LA I was homeless at the time actually like living in my car and I was uh like oh like the place I was parking my car next to was like right outside the Scientology center. Cause that's where all my friends lived. And I was like, I wonder what's inside there. And so I looked it up online and apparently there's like nothing online. Cause everyone's every journalist is too afraid to go inside because they get like, I think like the one person that did do a documentary in Scientology, uh, they gave her a bunch of like, they would call in bomb threats under her name to like all these different places. And she almost committed it was so bad. So every journalist is like super terrified to like do any pieces about them. And I was like, do they have a hit out on you. Probably. Yeah. I think they okay. do. Yeah. Um, they don't like Ben. I'm so glad we oh were able God. to get you before you died, you know? And so, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I was actually a little worried uh, about Scientology for a little bit. Cause yeah, they can just like kill you and like no one will ever know. Like they have the money to cover it up, but I think they have even like, I think like they're the biggest intelligence agency besides the CIA or something. I don't know. Like secret 
intelligence agency, but so they can cover up a murder easily, easy peasy. But uh, I basically just went in with like spy cameras. I was like, I'm just going to show people what's going on inside. And uh, if it's good, I'll show the good things. If it's bad, I'll show the bad things. And turns out it's all pretty much bad. It's all just <laughs> brainwashing and bad. And then once we came up with this stuff, people were like, oh, now we can finally see what's going on inside. Like, and there's like visual proof. And then uh, yeah, Scientology didn't like it. So then part of the series is like exposing them. And then the other half of the series is always like how they retaliate. So in this example, they tried suing me for like a million dollars or something. And, and then, but was, you were living yeah, under your car. So yeah. they realized that you didn't have the million. Well, what I did is I made my own religion called Scientology sucks. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, approved dude. by the IRS. And so if you look up Scientology sucks in like the IRS like documents, it's a legitimate religion that the United States recognizes and they no couldn't get way. us for like, def they, I think they were trying to get us for like a deformative, uh, uh, what's it called? Uh, defamation. 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 Yeah, they were trying to get me on like defamation, but no longer is it defamation because it's what I believe in now. So I believe that Scientology sucks. And so that is my religion. I have the right to believe that. And, <laughs> and so no, I'm no longer defaming them. I'm practicing my own religion. And wow. Should we start a religion where uh, God wants us to rob banks? Yeah, 100%. And that's what we believe in? So God, the thing God though just is wants us to commit you can't, crime. So part of the IRS to like create a religion, you can't just create a religion based off of like something that's illegal or hateful. So I can't be like, oh, I'm going to, uh, and that's like kind of a thing. Like we had a bunch of detectives because they still tried suing us and the detectives had to determine is the word sucks a hateful word? And what like they ended up concluding is that the word sucks is not hateful. And, and like, no, hateful, I mean, Jared get, loves getting sucked. Don't yeah. you, Jared? <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> but it has to be hateful to an extent where it causes the other person to have a uh, emotional and physical reaction, if that makes sense. So if you go up and say, you suck to the average person, they're probably just gonna laugh at you, if that makes sense. So that's how we got away with it, pretty much. That, have you ever seen Nathan for you? Yeah, I love that oh, show. Oh, that fully reminds me of that. I, that was fully like a Nathan for you skit right there. Just like, <laughs> he's like, I'm getting sued for defamation. So I created my own religion. Like that's yeah. incredible. Yeah, and, how many members do you have? So our launch day was March 14th of 2020. And guess what happened March 14th of 2020? What? Uh, that's oh. the day everything got shut down for COVID. <laughs> okay. And, okay. And so, so it's your fault. And yeah, also I, a little backstory I forgot. So our oh, religion, they were really mad. we believe in partying, if that makes sense. So our church services, you have to have a legal congregation, like a meetup. So we're like, oh, let's just party. Like, let's, let's get everyone tax exempt to party. And then that's when like, okay, social distancing, like, let's not be so, let's let everyone stay away from each other. So we're like, ah, gosh, dang it. So maybe now that COVID's ending, we actually threw our first church service the other day. Uh, <laughs> we got a giant like house that's going to be demolished. And we threw our like a raging party the day before the house got demolished. So it's like no rules because the house gets demolished tomorrow no matter what so so you guys are just busting it down to Tatiana legally yeah yeah and the IRS Re approves. religiously religiously <laughs> busting it down to Tatiana okay great so you infiltrated Scientology and now your next venture was like well, I want to go into a cult well basically I took uh Ali on a date uh to this restaurant called the Yellow Deli I didn't know it was a cult at the time but it's open 24 hours so I was like oh this is a cool restaurant to go to now, because we were part of the cult for three weeks, we know why it's super weird in there, but Allie got a really weird vibe in there and she Googled it because she was like, this is just Are weird. Are you saying Everyone... you didn't get a weird vibe when you went the first no, time? We w no, we did get a weird vibe. Allie was the only one that got a no, weird vibe. No, I, I got a weird vibe too, but I've been there before. I've been there one other time and so I already knew they were weird. Oh, okay. So she Googled it and there was an article, like an investigation in the UK for like child labor and child abuse. And the first thing she goes, this is a reckless Ben video. So I called Ben and I was like, Ben, I think we got an infiltration for you. And then he's like, dude, we're doing it together. And so we ended up going into this cult together. You look online, you find out that it's the restaurant is ran by the cult or what is the... Yes, it's the res the restaurant or the, the cult uses the restaurant as like a recruiting device, if that makes sense. So you go Gosh. in, I'm going to be 100% honest. They serve amazing food <laughs> because food they slaps. don't pay their labor. Like it's like, I think labor is the biggest expense when running a restaurant. So they can sell their amazing organic food for cheap. And so you come in there and you're like, wow, these must be great people doing a great thing. Let's like see what they're about. And then they get you on like such a good, they like hook you, you know? And, and then they start telling you like all these like weird things. And like, you're like, ah, you kind of dismiss them because of how good the food is and how like nice they <laughs> What are some examples and, of some weird things that they would say? Um, well, so when Danny and I first went in, the guy just literally would 
he sat us down and our server, you know how normally they like go and serve other people and stuff. He just stood there and would just stare at us like watching our food. It and, was weird. And he would just stay like, not even like saying anything, just staring at us, like watching us eat. And I think in his eyes, he thought he was like comforting us. Like, Oh, I'm going to be there for them when they eat, you know, like, Oh, See, is- Alyssa, when I stand over your bed at night and I watch <laughs> you sleep, I'm comforting you. All right. <laughs> but they don't really know how like the outside world works. So, a lot of times they do things that come off as really creepy to people like us, mm. but in their eyes, they just think they're being extra comforting or they think they're being extra loving. So they'll literally tell you that they love you. And <laughs> you're like, that's really creepy. I don't know this person. Like who says I love you to like, like the first time you meet someone and like literally every, that's like the first, that's basically how they started. They'll be like, I love you. And you're like, that's really weird. But to them, they just think they're being like, uh, loving, I guess. But the cult, like they don't associate with the outside world. So they think anyone that's not them is evil and came from Satan. It's like a religious cult, but they take like Christianity and they take it to like, how do you explain it? They take the Bible or? Yeah, they just take the Bible very, very literally to a point where it's like, okay, you, you like, obviously you shouldn't take it this literally. Like, uh, for example, it says like something like 144,000 virgins should be sacrificed in the, the Bible somewhere. I'm, I'm not, it's somewhere in Romans, I think is what I got one. If you guys need an extra, (laughs) we actually, we need it for our final stunt. And what, what, how they interpreted that as is, uh, we need to literally do a, like a group suicide for 144,000 virgins. And that way, like Jesus comes back and it'll end the world and we'll all go up into heaven. And it basically, it's just gonna be another like Jonestown, I but, guess. But their but. Jesus is called Yahshua. Like they basically said, his name is not you, uh, Yeshua, uh, Jesus, any other name, but Yahshua. It's Yahshua and they're dedicating their whole life to Yahshua. So they live at their 60 acre farm in San Diego. They, the only time they associate with the outside world is when they work the restaurant and they work the farmer's markets. Other than that, they and live is, in their community, only talk to, to another community. Is that just to make money so they can keep up what they do on the farm? Or like why, I thought if they're not allowed to participate in the outside world, why do they have the restaurant? Basically everything comes down to their ultimate mission of let's get 144,000 virgins, right? Mm -hmm. So, I mean, the restaurants are biggest recruiting device. So if they want like, yeah, they don't really associate with the outside world, but they're not like associating with them. They're basically trying to take the outside world, invite them into their place. If that makes sense. So they can sacrifice. Yeah. Yeah. So they like love bomb you right away. Like act like, like, they're weird people, but like super nice. But then Ben and I went in there. Like, so basically they recruited us to their farm. We go there. Do you, what, did you take offense that they thought you guys were virgins? No, no. no we purposely went in as virgins. Oh, nice. <laughs> nice yeah. Nice. So we, we wanted to gain their trust more. So if we, if we told them we're virgins, we're going to gain their trust more. Yeah. So basically we had different roles. So Ben's like the infiltration guy. This is my, I'm, I'm learning from him. So Ben was like, I'll live there full time. But how are we going to charge the spy cameras? We need someone not to live there. So basically, I made up this fake story that I'm house sitting in like South San Diego because I didn't want them to know where I actually lived. And I told them I was watching this cat and a dog for a month. And I was like, after the month, I can live there full time. But I actually just said that. So I, I would basically get to the coal around 7 in the morning and leave around 9 p.m. And I'd come back each day. But I was really going home each night, uploading all the footage to the hard drive, emptying the memory card and recharging like all the spy gear for the next day. Cause we had nine pairs of spy glasses, like seven spy watches. He was even secretly, he found a way to secretly uh, charge like two spy watches at the Colt without anyone knowing. Oh yeah. I made a little, like they gave us a little gift basket. And so what I would do is I would put the, I like made a little hole with like some of the gardening tools they gave me. And I like made a little hole and then like underneath my pit, like through my pillow, I put the wire from the, the outlet and then it went through my pillow and then through the little hole in the gift basket. And then underneath like all of the like uh, candy and stuff they gave us, like was like where all the secret cameras were charging. Goodness. Oh my God. God. All right, MacGyver. And and he lived in a yurt with like seven other members in a bunk bed. So you never, you're never alone. There's never alone time. So we had code words of how to like talk to each other because you couldn't talk because they were always around you. Well, okay. So you go to the restaurant, you convince them um, that you want to be part of them. What's the conversation like? Are they like come here at this time? What's what's the very start of this look like? They basically said, "Hey, uh, so we actually came at a really good time. The, the our our waiter at the time was getting married, so he said, yeah, come back next week. I'm getting married. Come to my wedding. Like it would be awesome.' We're like, we're down. So we just show up, and the and, we- the wedding's at the farm where they all live. It's yeah. a 68 acre farm, and, and you just pull up, and it's just 
all these cult members. And the creepiest thing is that the wedding, they call it a pre-enactment for the final day when they do their group suicide or whatever, when God takes these 144,000 virgins. So they like, they did these terrible skits. It was the funniest thing in the whole world <laughs> where they're like, we have to like basically sacrifice ourselves for you. And like, we're, we got to give up our lives and like, kind of like referring to like, the, but they, they do it in such a watered down way. Cause like the whole public's there and they don't want to say like straight up, we're doing a group suicide. So they try and like water it down. But like, if you know what they're actually talking about, it's really creepy actually, but it's kind of funny. Like to like hear all of them say all of that and stuff. So, and, so you're at the wedding they're doing a fake suicide. Yeah. And a pre-enactment suicide. A, yeah. Um, but can't you not say that word on YouTube right now? Ah, who knows? You know, uh, we've said a lot of things. Okay. Yeah, okay. <laughs> who knows? I'm, I want to screw it up for you guys. No, it's fine. Yeah. We have to bleep that out when I say I got one of my videos taken down because of that. Uh, Just saying that. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, this is a, a strike on my channel. This is for educational purposes. Yeah. yeah mine's for educational. Mine's super for educational purposes. <laughs> I go and I say, Hey, the cult, like this is, bad stuff that I do not agree with. And then they take it down because the AI robots think that I'm the one that agrees with it. And they're like, you're promoting these hateful things. I'm like, no, I'm not. I'm trying to do the opposite of that. <laughs> I'm actively the, like, exposing them. Yeah. Okay. So you get there and then- I'm sorry. You go, I, I went on a tangent. I'm sorry. No, it's I'm not fine. a big deal. You can say whatever you want, honestly. Really? <laughs> and if we hate it, you know what we'll do? We'll cut it out. Oh, nice. Yeah. Is that cheating or- No. You no, no, to cut no, it out? No, no, oh, no. nice. Um, okay. So you guys get there. The wedding goes well. Who do you talk to next about living there? First, they tried to invite us to what they call a Friday night, which is the next public time for people to come. That's the recruiting night when the public comes to the cult and they basically say like, hey, you should stay with us. Like maybe you could stay here the rest of your life and stuff like you could have a new life ahead of you. And, uh, and then, so people started telling us that. And then the more we start talking to people, they say, you don't even have to wait for a Friday night. Come tomorrow. Come like this day. Come, like we have beds we can make for you. Like we would, we love you guys. Like, like you guys are loved here in the outside world. They, I mean, it's chaos out there, but here you guys are loved. So you should just stay here with us. And they, they make it seem like, a, like a terrible idea to leave, but a great idea to stay. Okay. So when, when you say, okay, we'll be here at this time, how do they initially greet you? Do they give you like a, a cult starter kit? What, what happens? A um, pamphlet. Yeah. So our, basically our first day staying there, they, what well, they gave us like a shovel and said like, get to work pretty much. And yeah, um, every single day you're doing hard manual labor. It yeah. Sucks. So for, for what? That's, that's pretty standard for cults. So we're, we're make at the end of the day, we're making food for the restaurant. We're doing farm work for the restaurant so they can get food, but it's pretty standard for cults to just right away. They like, they make you busy and they try and break you down. If that makes sense. It's like step number two after love, like st love bombings. Number one, like we love you. Step number two is they break you down. So it's like, we're going to break you down that way. You're like fully relying on us, you know? And like, you can't really like think for yourself. Like, uh, basically like you're just like a cult member and you're just a vessel for what they want. Um, yeah. so, so did they give you a schedule of, it was 18 hours of manual labor a day. Oh, and and if you're me, so we weren't baptized because if you're a baptized disciple in the cult, you have to give up everything, meaning your families, your money, anything you own, you're dedicating your whole life to Yahshua. You have to give it up and you live there and you do. And if you, you can't disagree, you can't have another opinion. If you have another opinion, you're out. And, um, and so we basically like when we first started, like, cause I wasn't living there. Ben was, I was going back each day and we, it was just basically just gaining their trust, gaining their trust. And then once we started gaining their trust more, we could start asking different questions and started getting them to talk about their racism, how they're homophobic about, they call it disciplining their children, but they're literally beating their children with rods. Was it primarily white? I assume the thing is, is it is a uh, known to be a white supremacy cult. So they do teach that white people are like holier than like black people, for example, like they think like they literally straight up told me black people are only on this earth to be slaves to white people. They also and said that the, the Jews deserve to die in the Holocaust. Yeah. And basically Hitler was just disciplining the Jews. That's what, that's yeah, what they were like, the Jews were starting to take over in Germany and Hitler didn't really like that. So he was just doing a lot of discipline on the Jews, you know, and the we, Jews got what they deserved for the, trying to take over Germany. And Ben captured all that on a spy watch. He just kept acting like he had an itch and he had his watch on. He was just recording the guy. But that's a great question though, that you asked was, uh, are they a mostly white, cult, which the answer is actually no. They have a lot of different races in there, which is strange because it's like, how can they be racist, but then live on the same place with black people? And I guess the answer to that question is like, well, didn't slave owners live on the same property as their slaves? So like, do they, just because they live together doesn't mean that they're treating each other in like... So they treated minorities as slaves, kind of? So 
basically everyone on that lives there is a slave. They call themselves like slaves to God. And that's why they have to do 18 hours of manual work a day. But um, they genuinely believe that at least on the outside world, that if you have a white person and a black person that are like the same, the white person is just seen as a better person purely because of the color is like they teach that being black is a sin in itself. Like you're just sinning against God for just how you were born. That's terrifying. And we had, we had like a major twist to the series where uh, Ben told them that he's getting married and he's got a fiance and she's Chinese. And uh, it's, our, oh, it's just our, yeah. it's our, it's our really good friend, Lydia. She's awesome. And she was, she just not a YouTuber or anything. She was just down to infiltrate with us. Yeah, and she's a cult girl. She's just like fascinated in cults. So I like brought her along cause I, for her birthday party, she like did a whole cult ceremony where like it was a thing. So I was like, Oh, this is a girl that likes cults. Let's, Bring her into the cult, like, because it's hard to find people to, like infiltrate a cult with you. You know, you kind of <laughs> no, gotta. It is, like, it's tough. Yeah, you know, I probably wouldn't have done it. You know, I'd no. probably be like, I got to do anything else. Dude, um, I, I, yeah. I was scared. I was having night sweats every night. I would go home. I was just, it's so scared because you can't break character. Yeah, you can't, yeah. or, or you can get kicked out. They'll catch your glasses. I don't know. Can they hurt me? You, you had a little bit of a heart attack moment. I think that first night that they were like inviting you to the Friday, uh, the Friday night where you didn't realize your glasses lit up when they were uh, recording. Yeah. yeah. So we so we had two pairs of spy glasses and the first pair of spy glasses is what he used in Scientology. So th those ones don't light up. Okay. Then we got another pair and we didn't know that they light up at night. And so we didn't <laughs> yeah, know. Blink. And so, so we're at we're at dinner inside and it's getting dark. And then my I just see this blue light blinking. And then uh Nathaniel the the cult member we lied to the most. Um he was like is is your glasses like is that a blue light? And uh just I, I kind of figured that like I'll make up a story if they ask, ask about my glasses. I didn't know they were going to ask about it blinking. So I just made up this whole story about uh, I have a severe lazy eye. I actually do have a lazy eye though, but it only, <laughs> it only goes off when I'm tired. Like you only see it when, I, when I'm tired. Like I can make it go lazy right now. <laughs> yeah. I just, Wait, I, I want to see it lazy. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah, I, just put, I just put it back. Yeah. Um, so I made up this whole story that I have to wear these glasses because my doctor gave me these glasses. It helps correct the eye. And basically the blinking light, it's showing that it's working. And so the guy just believed my fake story that I just made up right on the spot. And then I was like so nervous the next night where I ended up wearing those blinking glasses. We basically had like nine pairs of those. I'd wear those during the day. And then the, the spy glasses, they only, re, they only record for an hour and 30 minutes. Oh, wow. So I, I look at my phone I, when I start recording them. And then I would go say, I have, I'm going to go to the bathroom. I'd go to my car and rechange out the spy glasses. Or I'd have them in my pockets. I'd go change them out in the, in the bathroom. And uh, then those glasses that didn't blink, I would wear them at night. Smart. Yeah. Smart. And they never, quite, they never were like, hey, you're wearing different glasses. They never said that. Yeah. But that's always the scariest part is when they're like, what type of glasses are those? Because you know that if you don't say the exact right thing, that the whole mission's over. And all this time, like researching them, all these plans you want to do could just be over in a second if you say the wrong thing. Yeah. Do you ever so fear really for like, your life in these instances? I, for sure. I, I mean, Ben, because he's infiltrated Scientology, he was more like, I got this. But this is my first time. So I was just scared every single day. Yeah. Every single day I hear from Danny, like, Ben, they're going to kill us. Like they have the ability to kill us. He's like, because I think there was one day we like saw they had like a gun on the property and I was like holding it, like pretending to shoot it. And Dave's <laughs> like, they have guns. Like they're going to shoot us. Like, oh no. And I mean, which is probably a legitimate fear to have. Like, I, I'm not trying to like say like, oh, that was bad that you had those fears. So that's like probably a, what a rational, any rational human would have. But, but, um, but I just was scared because like we never told them a the truth about anything. Thing. We lied our butts off every single day just to gain their trust. And it worked because we were, we were there for three weeks. Damn. What, what yeah. was the tier system of, I guess, who was in charge and who was so under them? There, that's a great question, actually. Uh, so there is a different tier system, but it's it's based on like states. So everyone that was at the community we were at is seen as an equal. If that makes, They're all the bottomest tier. So... Uh, and then like the higher ups, they have, live in Tennessee, which is where the headquarters are. But it's really interesting because when it comes to a restaurant, like running a restaurant, how can everyone be equal? Normally you have managers, you have like uh, just like the employees that make the food, but at the restaurant, everyone's equal. So like no one clocks in to a manager. Also, no one gets paid. So you just, it's like perfect communism. They call it communism with the God is what they say, but you just show up and you work and no one tells you what to do. You just do whatever you want, whenever you want. There's no regulations. Like if I just want to stop working, I guess, I mean, they, 
it's like no one's going to tell you to keep working. It's just like, oh, you're going to hell. Like God saw it. And now he's good. And that's what keeps them in line, I guess, is like God is their boss, if that makes sense. But, but who schedules the day? It's like, oh, you need to go do the. Well, what are some examples of the manual labor well, you had to well, do? Well, basically, we were farm based. So we live full time at the farm. And then part of the Colts restaurant base, so they're full time at the restaurant where they live at the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Like I saw their rooms. And so the people at the farm work twice a week at the restaurant. So that's what we did twice a week. And, um, Basically, every morning, was it at 7 in the morning, the men, huh? 7 or 6 in the morning? Uh, it was, I think, 7. Yeah, 7 in the morning, you gather, and you basically do culty dances. <laughs> and, then, and then basically, like, they're singing, they're guys playing the guitar, everyone's dancing, and you're just singing these songs. And we, we're doing these dances. We have no idea what we're doing, but we're trying to fit in. And then after, everyone pulls their chairs in, and they just talk about, like, what they've learned ab about, like, praising Yahshua. Basically, they believe the women have to be submissive to the men. And they just, all, all they're good for is to be in the kitchen. And so the men, they work, and then right after the Jared, men, huh? Jared feels the same way, and I've been trying to teach him. Zach, differently. are you part of the tribe? Stop projecting, okay? No, I'm, Wait, whoa, that, whoa, I'm not projecting. <laughs> huh? Did you get your influence from 12 tribes? Yeah, you know, I'm a huge Yellow Deli fan. <laughs> really? Is that why uh, you think girls have to be submissive to you? 100%. Yeah, yeah, he's a big, uh, we'll, a big we'll you guys organic need, food. You guys need to infiltrate his room. Let's just be honest there. This guy. Do you put the... <laughs> what, uh, so one thing that the, the 12 tribes would teach us is when we brought uh, our friend Lydia, for example. Oh, yeah, I forgot, to, I forgot to talk about that. Uh, yeah. Basically, they said uh, she had to be in the kitchen and uh, they were like, like women belong in the kitchen and stuff. And so we did what's pretty much the biggest no, no there. Like we were like, OK, we're going to piss them off the, is the most we can piss them off. So she was like, oh. I actually don't know how to cook food. Ben usually does the cooking in our relationship. <laughs> and they were like, oh no, like this is bad, you know? And, oh and my God. Yeah. And then, and then they were like, well, does your mom cook? And she's like, well, my dad usually co cooks. <laughs> and that pissed them off. And they were like, oh my gosh, like this girl is so bad. And then that's when they were like starting to tell me like, dude, I don't think you can like marry this girl because like she doesn't know how to be a real woman. And I guess there was a few other things that we did. Like she was kind of our wild card. It was like everything that they believe in, she was kind of doing the opposite. Gotcha. Like Ben right. ended up having a one-on-one -on -one conversation with one of the members saying that like, she's been having lustful thoughts about women. Oh yeah. Cause the leader of this cult, the lead, literally the leader of this cult states that if you're gay, you should be put to death. So, but if you have a gay thought, they think God should punish you for it. And, and so Ben was like, Oh, she's been having lustful thoughts about women. She comes to the cult. They put her in the kitchen. The next day, we throw we we throw a wild card and we just go, "Hey, she's in the hospital with pneumonia," and they fully believe she was in the hospital because God was punishing her for having a gay thought. Yeah. So a little backstory. So yeah, we kind of wanted to see like, is the leader like, is this just something the leader said one time? Because sometimes people say things and don't mean it, or is this something that like they truly believe? Like, if you've had, if you're gay, should you actually be put to death? Is that actually what they believe? So we just told him like, "Hey." She sometimes like, like it's fine. Like we're still getting married and stuff, but sometimes she'll just see a girl on the side of the street and she'll look at it and be like, oh, that's a, that's a hot girl. You know, like not that she wants to pursue that girl, but just like she can acknowledge the fact that another girl is attractive. And they were so disgusted by that where they were like, dude, you better fix this in her or else something like God's going to punish her for this. So then the next couple of days we were like, okay, uh, she's like sick. And they're like, oh, See, we told you she was going to get sick. This is God punishing her. And then we're like, so what do we do? Do we, do we give her medicine if she's sick? And they're like, no, you can't give her medicine because that's going against God's plan. God wants her to be sick. And if, if you give her medicine, you're interfering with, with God's plan pretty much. And so we just, in our storyline, like obviously she was like fine back in LA, you know, like yeah. she's just chilling. But like what we told them is like, oh, she's getting sicker and sicker. And then finally, like after, a, a, I think it was like, we kind of escalated pretty fast. I think yeah. this happened over the course of like two days. Pretty much. <laughs> so she went from like having a gay thought to now she's on her deathbed. And I was like, if she doesn't take medicine, she's going to die. Like, like now it's, the doctor said she only has like maybe two hours left to live. And the, her dying wish is she wants to see me one more time before she dies. Like, because we were supposed to get married, you know? And I think we were like three or four days away from getting married at this point in our storyline. And, and what they said was, let the dead bury the dead. You're as bad as she is if you go visit her in the yeah. hospital. And Ben's like, it's, it's like an hour away. I'll just go really quick and come back. I'll come right back. And they, all they said was, let the dead bury the dead. And, and this was, at this point... Up until then, we kind of agreed with everything they said because uh, we wanted to gain their trust. But at this point, I was like, this is ridiculous. I don't want to just, uh, I don't want to like just go with along with this. So we actually, this is our first debate we had and I debated with them. It's funny in the video, you see it's like, like 
uh, it's right after dinner. So, and it, this is the middle of summer when I like, got night light until like 9 PM. So it's like probably like 6 PM or something. And we have like a three hour debate and it's like fully nighttime by the end we're debating. I'm just like, but she just wants to see me like, w-. and like at this point, like, she's probably dead. Yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah. She said she <laughs> to live, but I'm like, she just like wants to see me one more time before she dies and stuff. And like, that's her dying wish. Like, please, I just made him feel as bad as possible. There's no sympathy from them. And like, I guess some people in our YouTube comments were saying things like, like, what did you prove? This is just a fake scenario. Like, like you guys lied to them. Like that doesn't make you guys good guys. But then I would argue that like, this is like through us doing this, we actually found out that this is how they react. And this is a common thing that happens where ex members have reached out to us and said, Oh, I was in a scenario just like this, where someone was dying, like a love of my life was dying and they wouldn't let me give them medicine because of the exact same things they were telling you guys. And now we have proof that this is what they do. So like, thank you guys for exposing this and stuff. But it is like really sad that like people have died and stuff because of this exact same scenario. So this was kind of like a fictional like parody, like making fun of them scenario. But it, it, like it actually has like truth behind it of like this is actually how they react to it. Even one of the members, Nathaniel, he was telling us a story because we told them that Lydia passed away. So he opened oh, up yeah. to us and he basically said, because they don't believe in medicine, that they have their childbirth at home and one of their kids died from childbirth. And he says that, it would have survived if they went to the hospital, but we don't believe in that. Yeah. Wow. And, and, and he goes, we're not bitter about it. Yeah. And then when we, I think the first thing they told us when we told them that Lydia died was they were like, ah, eh, she should have been aborted. That way she wouldn't, cause like, she's definitely going to hell now that she had that gay thought. But if she was just aborted, she might be better. So like, maybe you shouldn't have fallen in love with her. Like your place is here now. They're like, this is proof. Now you have no distractions. They were actually like, kind of happy she died. Cause they were like, now you have no distractions. Like you're here. And Did you, you guys just- ever bring her back and be like, she raised from the dead. <laughs> oh, we, we were. We, yeah. We no, no, whole- we, no, we did bring her back. Well, yeah, but we had a whole ending planned where she, we were going to cover her in fake blood and then she was going like, to run through the cult like, ah, and fake blood, <laughs> like scare them all. But uh, we got kicked out, I think, like two days before we were planning on doing that. Yeah. Uh, yeah, they cut, spoiler alert, they cut our spy glasses. But yeah, um, yeah. That, was, that was the original plan was we were going to cover her in fake blood. We actually filmed like a scene. I like, uh, she was like in my room, like in fake blood and she like gets up and I like, like edited it into like security camera footage. I was going to show them the security camera footage, but like, yo, like she's dead in my room right now. Like, look, but she just got up. Like, what do we do? And then she was going to show up and start chasing him around. And that's, that was gonna be our grand finale for it. They but. probably would have shot her for being completely honest. Oh, hundred <laughs> percent. She would have been dead. <laughs> you think so? Probably. I mean, that would have like freaked them out to an extent. Like if they're truly that much of like God's will kind of people, you know, uh-huh. just like a, a sinner raising from the dead and they already believe the outside world is and then chasing them saved. covered in blood. Yeah, I, don't know, my, like, I don't think they would have shot her. I think they would have just prayed to God. They would, I think they would have got down on their knees and been like, ah, like, please stop this. We love you. And they would be like, God's not going to let her kill us. And if she does kill us, then it's just part of God's plan. I think that's what they would have done. But this episode of dropouts is brought to you by better help. Give online therapy a try at betterhelp.com slash dropouts and get on your way to being your best self. Uh, you know, recently I uh, haven't been my best self. So I have actually looked to better help to uh, find a therapist and and help me out with um, some mental strains I've been having recently. So from a first account, I can, I can tell you guys, this is, this is a service that you need. It's kind of like going to the gym, uh, but not for your body, for your brain. So if you're thinking about giving therapy a try, I personally highly recommend BetterHelp. It's easy, flexible, works around your schedule and completely online. So you can do it anywhere. You've you got to try it. It's, it's something I really think you need in your life. All you have to do to get started is fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist and you can switch your therapist at no additional charge. And therapy is not just for those who have experienced a major trauma in their life. It's Uh, something that you can use to learn healthy coping mechanisms, uh, setting boundaries in your own life. Um, There's a multitude of reasons why somebody would seek therapy. It's a tune up, you know, you tune up your car. It's a lot of people think you have to have that, like you said, a a big traumatic event to get into therapy. But again, I think it's just about working out your brain in such a way. So you don't fall off the rails or, or you know healthy habits to stay in a consistent positive mindset if you're in it or work towards one. So if you want to start living a more empowered life, therapy can get you there. Visit betterhelp.com slash dropouts for 10% off your first month. That is betterhelp, B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P.com slash D-R-O-P-O-U-T-S. Thank you. Try it out. Thank you so much, BetterHelp. And back to the show. So do you, are they like... They, they preach a lot of hate and they have like a lot of hateful like thoughts and 
beliefs, but are do you think they're violent people with their with their yeah. with their with their kids yeah. with their kids like they, obviously there's child abuse and stuff, but to the outside world, well, you- I don't know. We read in an FBI report that um, so there's been multiple times where this has happened where someone will like a journalist, for example, will talk bad about the community. And then uh, like a week or two weeks later, they'll just die in a car crash, which like shouldn't have happened. Like it's like a, like an intentional car crash pretty yeah. much. And it's, and it's happened like multiple times to these people where like enough times where like the FBI is now reporting about it. Wow. And I mean, you can kind of make the argument that like, this might be their biggest hit piece they've ever gotten, uh, especially because we went in with like secret cameras and have done a 10 part series, like breaking down every single one of their beliefs, showing exactly everything that's like wrong with them and how their brainwashing works. So uh, you could argue that, but we've said multiple times in our videos, like we are not suicidal. We are actually phenomenal drivers. Have you ever been in a car crash? Uh, not a severe one. <laughs> not a severe one. Goes, okay, so uh, besides, 12, actually. So maybe if Danny dies in a car crash, that's expected. But I have never been in a car crash. So if I die in a car crash, uh, we have said it specifically in our YouTube videos that you know exactly who to look at, and it would that would so me dying by car crash would destroy them because now the the FBI is basically more like solid proof like oh well that guy said he wasn't suicidal and he's a good driver now he dies in a car crash let's investigate this cult yeah and it would shut them down i think so and they couldn't risk that they can't risk their suicide not happening because then they don't all go to heaven so i think they wouldn't risk killing me well i didn't realize it until the series came out and i saw like that it started with the yellow deli that we had actually talked about the 12 tribes a long time ago on the podcast, really? like probably over a year because I saw an article that there was, uh, I think it was in Colorado, but there were like uh, a few cases of like a uh, wildfire that they thought was like arson. Like they, it was man uh, started by someone and they were actually investigating the 12 tribes because it was, uh, like all the wildfires were occurring in places that kind of like rivaled them. It was like other sort of cults that lived out in the middle of nowhere, Colorado. Um, and so that that's why I was asking if they're like violent people, because I read this article a long time that they were on, under investigation for arson. Can you speak about the children a little bit? And you kind of touched on it, but. So they call it disciplining, but it like. They, they try to justify it. Like if they get called out for child abuse, they're like, oh no, we're just disciplining our child. But it's not discipline. They're using rods and like they're basically taking their kids to the back for anything. Like you can explain it. You remember the one part. Yeah, so I'll say this. Uh, so disciplining kids in America, like corporal punishment, like spanking your kids, that's a pretty like divided, controversial topic in the United States. Like pretty much like sure, like half of America agrees with it and the other half of America like demonizes it. So uh, our stance wasn't really to say like whether or not like spanking your kids is right or wrong. What we have to say about it is like, okay, like obviously like they like beat their kids to where they're so bruised up. A lot of the times they can't even like make it to class. Like you can't go to school or you can't make it out to like their like worshiping God thing because they have bruises from head to toe. And like, no matter what the kid does, like you shouldn't be doing that to your kid. And then, but like, and then we take it a step further because it's like, okay, like obviously this is bad, but like, what are they getting punished for? Like they must be doing something really bad if they're getting this big of a punishment. Right. So, uh, and- how- it's almost three weeks because we got kicked out after three weeks. Um, Ben's like, dude, it's almost done. Like, because we were going to end it kind of maybe like a week after we got kicked out, but we got kicked out. But Ben's like, dude, it's coming to the end. I want you to follow one of the moms because we, we know exactly when the kids are going to go get beat. And so I went and followed the mom and I go inside. She picks up the beat stick, which is it's like a rod like this big. And she sees me. And Made she, out of what? It's just like wood, right? I think bamboo. Oh, yeah. I don't know. Yeah, probably bamboo. And uh, she sees me. She puts the the stick down and she takes the kid upstairs. And I just hear screaming and the kids screaming and everything. But um, basically, we found out on the spy footage because we're like, why did this kid get taken to the back? What did he do? And we literally heard the mom say, oh, he bites his nails. And he just put his hands in his mouth. He got taken to the back. And then the girl's like, you're going to help him break this habit, right? She's like, yeah, he's going to break that. Which, I don't know. I think... In like my personal opinion, like you can be all for like spanking your kids and stuff, but I think like like spanking your kids, it happens multiple times a day, every day. Yeah, even like giving them bruises and stuff, just for like the smallest thing. Like if you're not perfect, like if you bite your nails, if you like leave like an extra bite of food on your 
like if you don't finish all of your food, if you like smile at another kid, you know, if you, I think even like, if you're like a little kid, you're not allowed to like talk to the other kids, which is hard because like your kids, like you want to talk to the other kids. Like if you like just talk to another kid, like you're getting like literally, it's not just spanked. It's like beat up and it's terrible. And it's, it's more of like even physical abuse. It's more just mental abuse of like, wow, I can't eat. Like they, they, they basically just beat you up for just being a kid. Like yeah. they're just doing things that kids do. And it's like, how can you have a childhood if, and that's just like mental. Like, well, that also trains you to know exactly what you should and shouldn't. So you can't say no to what everyone says. Right. Yeah. And, and, uh, we had a uh, two hour FaceTime with an ex member. She reached out when our series was out. She's like, I love what you're doing. And, um, I told her to tell her my, her story of because she was born into it and she escaped at 35 years old. She said basically how, the only. Sorry, before you, uh, how long is it? Have they been together? Since the or? 70s. Okay, okay. Yeah, she basically said that's the only way to leave. Like you, you have to escape. Like they won't let you leave. And um, we asked if there's anything like basically we miss in our series, and she said there like yes, there's child abuse, but there's also child molesting. Oh wow. Um, and she was telling me a story about uh, a 35 year old man with a 13 year old girl and the girl was even scared to like go outside her room at nights. And basically the 35 year old guy told, uh, no, no, no. So basically she was telling me, um, one of the main guys was like, Hey, you need to correct your daughter to the 13 year old, basically making it the 13 year old girl's fault. Basically like this 35 year old man is pursuing this girl. It must be the 13 year old girl's fault. It's her fault. There's something wrong with her. And they, they do it that way. It's really strange. But then she was also talking about the disciplining, about how basically she would get taken up to the back like eight times a day. She was like, wow. and she was saying that like the cult members would make her, it's like they call it spanking, but it's, it's with the rods, do that to her kids even when they're still in diapers. Okay, I want to add something onto this too. Oh so, so because, yeah, so because the sexual abuse of like children is so like bad in the communities, we actually read one of the FBI reports that it says hepatitis or sorry, yeah, like uh, herpes is like prevalent with like almost everyone at the community because of how much like sexual abuse there is. So wow. we thought we could help. So we uh, actually went in with condoms one day and we tried passing out condoms in like the group meeting. We're like, Hey, like we want to, like, we think that what you guys are doing is good. We want you guys to all be safe. And they got really pissed at us for that. And because we were like, Oh, we're trying to help like keep you guys safe and stuff. And they were like, well, we like, God doesn't believe yeah, in would, condoms. Yeah. I've been with God's plan. That's but, actually like, a big spoiler. That episode's not out yet, but yeah, well, that comes <laughs> out like next week, but um, no, like two weeks, two weeks. But, uh, but yeah, but I, I just thought it was kind of funny because it was like, well, like we're trying to do a good thing and like help you guys by giving you guys condoms. So like if this is going to be a problem at your guys' community, at least you guys can be safe with it, you know? And, yeah. and they really didn't like, they like took a big offense to that, which was like weird because it's like, oh, we're just trying to like keep you, like if I offered you guys like hand sanitizer to stay clean, like you guys would take that. So why not like, take why not condoms. stay clean in a, a different way? Is there, is there anything else you maybe want to explain in the San Diego cult before you talk about getting kicked out and how they found out and all of that? I don't know. It's just so much that happened. I guess, should we talk about when, uh, so I, there is one thing I oh, want to talk about. What that, about when we're trying to break Nathaniel? No, no, no. I, I want to talk about this. This is actually a really cool thing. So this was something I've never experienced before in a YouTube series was, so in this series, I was living there for three weeks, 24 hours a day. And, um, there's no breaks except for literally when, like, because when you're sleeping, you, everyone sleeps in a yurt together. So everyone's there together. And so you're in character from when you wake up to when you go to bed. I guess when you shower, like, they don't watch you in the shower. So that. Did you guys have fake names and everything? No. Uh, no just fake backstories in San Diego. And so uh, because of that, like, it, once you're there for like two, three weeks and you're just living in this, like, fake reality, because it is a fake reality, like, you actually start to believe it. And, like, even though, like, you know that everything they're doing is brainwashing, you still get brainwashed, and, which is, like, I guess I experienced that a little bit in Scientology, but not nearly as much as I did in this community. And there was times where I was, like, texting Danny where I was, like, like, I'm actually, like, really sad right now because they were telling me I have to, like, break up with Lydia, and they're, like, something bad's going to happen. It's, like, even though I'm not actually getting married to Lydia, even though, like, she's not having these gay thoughts, and even though she's not going to hell, like, in my, I heard it so many times that it's just, like, Wow, like I almost like wanted to cry because it was like that sad for me. So and he got he got so deep into his character when he was texting me. I got because I was like I said I was going home each night, coming back each day, and I was like, "What the heck is the cult breaking Ben?" And I was like sending him text messages. I was like, "Ben, it's it's just a YouTube video, dude. We're exposing <laughs> them. Like, snap out of it." And then I was crying at home. I was like, "Dude, did the cult just break Ben?" 
Like, what is going on? It was really scary. Yeah, but it's kind of crazy just like how powerful like brainwashing can be because it's like if I go into this knowing it's brainwashing and like it was that powerful on me, like think about how someone that actually is like upset with their life that's like, Mm -hmm. I need a change in my life. Like, and like someone that's actually like willing to like listen to them and like actually like like, doesn't know it's brainwashing. Start as a kid and that's the only thing you've ever known. Yeah, Yeah, it's so, it's so much more powerful than you think. Like, like when you just watch a YouTube video, you're like, ah, you said this funny thing. Like, why can't you just disagree with that? But then you're there and you're like living in it. It's so much different of like when you're actually there, like experiencing it yourself. It's like you just get brainwashed and you're just a victim to like whatever they say pretty much. Like the one guy we lied to the most, like I feel like he, if you just shake him and get him out of that brainwash, that's probably the only guy we thought is like a really good person. But he's just so brainwashed where he's just like, there's, you can't help him. Yeah, there's so really nothing sad. you can do. But uh, you asked about our, our names. We, uh, so my name's Danny, but I, in the cult, I went by Daniel. And then they didn't yeah. ask for our last name. So he was just Yeah, we ben. changed up his name a lot. And my name's Ben, but we changed it to Benjamin. So we changed up my name pretty a lot too. <laughs> Don't worry, they won't be able to find you but, guys. Yeah. But the no. only thing they knew about me is they knew I was a virgin. And I told them I've been bull- they, they I basically was like, traveling competitive surfer before social media. Mm-hmm. So I told them I was a pro surfer because I don't believe in sports. So I thought they would be like, basically try to like bring me into the cult. I have to give up surfing. Why don't they believe in sports? Because it's not what God put us on earth to do. Anything that's not God gotcha. is evil. So like podcasting is evil. Uh, um, what else is evil? Uh, like techno music is evil because God didn't invent techno music. Humans invented that. Medicine is evil. Like not they, because it's a bad thing. Do they have just, any technology or is it? Uh, they have the slightest flip phones and that's just so they can communicate with uh, the restaurant pretty much. Yeah. They, they think Christianity has fallen. Like any religion that's not theirs, they said evil and came from Satan. Like everything is evil. But the only thing they knew about me is like, I, I told them my fake backstory that I've been bullied my whole life for being a virgin. I said during surf contest, uh, the surfers would have signs saying, don't let the virgin win. <laughs> and they just they just believe my my fake yeah. weird backstory and uh so they they only knew me as Daniel the virgin surfer that was it and they just knew it was Ben and uh he slack lines that's it hard rap names yeah for being honest and then <laughs> I remember when I was leaving the cold also like when I, I I actually snuck out one time uh to like get some stuff and I remember like on the drive home it was the the most grateful moment of my entire life because I was just driving home. First off, I was listening to some techno music. I was like, <laughs> yes, I, I'm listening to techno music and it's not a sin. Then I saw a billboard and like, I hate advertising. I think advertising is annoying, but just like the fact that we were allowed to like, I was allowed to see an advertisement and not like have it be a sin. I was so thankful for that advertisement. I was like, yes, billboards are allowed to exist. And I saw skyscrapers and I was like, yes. Like I was just grateful for every single thing I saw that I was driving by just because it was allowed to exist. Cause like once you're like, it was almost like I was in like a three week meditation where like, you're not allowed to have a single thought. You know what I mean? Like that's what you do when you meditate It's like any thought you just got to like cloud it out. And so like finally being able to like think for myself again and not just like, just being like a yes zombie, you know, like it was literally makes you like so grateful for everything. Maybe that's why meditative people are happier because they get into that area where they just can't think. And then when they experience life, they're like, Oh, nice. I think they say that like meditative people, it's like you can see in their brain, they have like higher dopamine levels. It's crazy. Wow. That's how I felt after I left the cult. It was like, I just got done with like a three week meditation. I was like, wow, I can experience real life again. This is sick. Yeah. So maybe explain how they caught you guys or, or what goes on there. We go to the cult normal as usual. And then they just started asking us like more questions, like asking me like, oh, so where are you staying? Like just being kind of more they, they never usually got really involved in my life. They didn't really care. They just liked that I wanted to be there. Mm-hmm. And I just, I thought it was off, but like we didn't really think of too much of it. And uh, we go down to manual labor like we usually do. We're just working hard manual labor. And what, what were you doing at the time? Uh, I think we were just like cutting cucumbers. Like th- there was big cucumbers. We had to put them in buckets and then like take it all the way to the other side, dump the bucket. And okay, then- what, what was the worst job and the best job? The worst job was, uh, so it was, also, you have to remember it's the middle of July, so it's a hundred degrees, yeah. uh, like Fahrenheit, which is really hot. And uh, you you can't wear shorts; you have to wear like long sleeves, long pants. So it's even hotter. And they put me in the sun, shoveling manure for ten hours straight, multiple days. Wow! And I'm shoveling manure just- for just ten hours, and it was. There was a couple of times I like wanted to quit and I was like, this isn't worth, this is, uh, this is the worst <laughs> job I've ever had in my life. Like I want to quit. I'm not getting paid. I'm not getting content out of it. I'm like, this is a waste of time. 
And, but I was like, it's got it. It's going to be worth it. And the, I just got to stick through this. Like it's for the good of the video. Like this is gaining their trust. Cause like after I do this work, there's no way they think I'm in here just to secretly infiltrate them. You know? Yeah. Sometimes I would just go, I have to go to the bathroom just to go because I was so overdoing the manual labor, yeah. but we would have code words. If I said, I love you, dude, that means I'm recording. And uh, if I said I'm tired, I'm not recording with the spy glasses. And uh, if he if he tells me I love you, uh, that means start recording the spy glasses. We're gonna start like talking to the guy. So at manual labor, we'll like get him to talk. Well, Ben will just start up a convo about like like we gay the, people. Yeah, gay people. Or, <laughs> so like, what are your thoughts on gay people? Or one of the cult <laughs> member, one of the cult members said the N word. We got that on footage. Like it just got crazy. So then the the day we got kicked out, Nathaniel, the guy that like basically is the if there's a manager, there's no manager, but he like runs the farm. And so we were with him every day. So he's the one that knew us the most. And he just seems so off, dude. It, ben, it was weird. Like still thinking about it to this day, it was weird. Like he gave me the most awkward hug. And I was like, how you doing? Well, and yeah, it'd be like if you found out like your mom is your dad, you know, it's like, oh, this person who I like got to really know is the exact opposite of what yeah. I thought they were, you and, know? And yeah. then he started asked, telling us like, like it's really bad to be like untruthful and like what else? I've kind of... I don't know. I would have the same reaction. Yeah. He was basically like, he was like, uh, he's like, well, we, we were also one day, I was one day away from getting baptized and that's when Ben's crazy. Yeah, I was, I was not going to get baptized. Shit. Dude, yeah. you have to give up everything. And like, that's when they take your bank account, your cell phone, your car keys, your house. So I had like, I, I had a fake phone. I was going to give them. I had like fake keys. I, I, I drained all the money from my bank account and like liquid cash. And that way, like they can take <laughs> everything, but like, this, like once it comes out, they're not gonna, like legally, they have nothing, you know? So, I mean, maybe like an old phone is all they would have, but Whole Holy um, shit, the, so commi was, the level of commitment dude, is It's astonishing. reckless Ben. It's yeah. crazy, dude. Yeah, but I was one day away, and then it would have been hilarious. But And then <laughs> the guy's like, oh, yeah, also, like, if you get baptized, like, you have to be, like, real, because, like, sometimes, like, we only baptize people if they're, like, really who they say they are and stuff, and we're like, what's this guy talking about? Like, yeah, what like, do you mean really who we say? So, so we're getting these things where it seems like they're, they're catching on to us, but how can they catch on to us? Like, I feel like we've been killing it. And I feel it's weird. Like, I feel like a God was looking out for us, dude. Cause yeah, like, God was definitely looking out because for us. The spot, so I, I, I always bring my water to manual labor and cause it's so hot. We're like working in over a hundred degree weather. And I forgot my water in the car. Like I had a huge jug cause you're there for so long and I never forget it. And so I was really thirsty. So I'm, I'm like, Ben, I'm going to go, go up to the car and get my water. And I was like, we just got some really good footage. Might as well go change out the spy glasses when I'm up there. So that means a brand new memory card. Go up there, go change out the spy glasses. I come down. Two of the main guys, they're never at the manual labor. They come down. And I thought that was really strange. Like, why are they coming down? And uh, I just started the spy glasses. So I just started and I'm walking down. So it's not really any footage at all. Um, I had to go pee. I go pee in a bush. So whatever, whatever got recorded with the spy glasses, I was, I was recording my piss, I guess. <laughs> and, uh, we, I get back from peeing and the two main members, they go, Hey Daniel, can I see your glasses? And to see on sketch, I was like, yeah, okay. I gave my glasses. It's, kind of, it's really hard to find the memory card because yeah. they're spy glasses. Yeah. You literally have to like bend a certain thing over. Like it, unless you know how the spy glasses work, you're not finding the SD card. Dude, yeah. he knew exactly where the SD card was right away. He takes it out and he goes, he goes, we know everything about to Ben, to Ben. We know you go by reckless Ben. We saw your Scientology series. We know this is what you do. And, uh, it was the most awkward, most uncomfortable moment of my entire life. I, I, I was like shaking, but we're both smart and without them seeing us, we took out our phones really quick and recorded audio. So we had about 15 minutes of audio of them kicking us out. Really? So at least we had that. We added that into our video. Um, but it, dude, it was so scary. But one good thing is they didn't even know I had a YouTube channel. They didn't. They probably thought I just worked for you or something. Do you know yeah. how they found out about you? We don't know. Um, no, no, so no, we know. We know. I think, I mean, we don't know 100%, but we know the guy who found out about us was a guy at the restaurant. And he said that we were asking some like pretty quite like some interesting questions that My sounded fault. like we were like interrogating them, which would have worked at the farm. Like we were asking the same questions at the farm and they were answering it. But because we hadn't gained their same trust of the restaurant, I guess it could come off as like it pushy, was, but yeah. it was something I said. I blew it's it for okay. the team. Yeah. Danny was basically just like, uh, um, like, so he just announced that my fiance died. He was like, Ben's fiance <laughs> died at, at eight in the morning. He's like, it's so sad. And like, he's like, it's like a really sad moment. And then like 30 seconds later, he's like, 
But also, like Ben should have been with a white girl, right? Like, like, you know, like, <laughs> like she's Chinese. That's fine. Like I've always seen Ben with a white girl, and then the guy's just like, wait, what? Like, the, what? okay. The only reason I said that is because the day before that, Ben wasn't recording, and the guy, that same guy, said the, the phone, same yeah. thing. Mm. He said the same exact thing that you shouldn't marry a Chinese girl. Yeah. So Ben's like, re say it, but get in on footage. And because we didn't gain that guy's trust yet, because we gained everyone's trust at the farm when we worked at the restaurant, they didn't really know us yet, yeah. so they couldn't trust us. So he was thought like we we're. We're like, I was testing him. And yeah. so I guess basically we found out that they looked us up and they can't find me. I'm Daniel, the Virgin Surfer. Go Google that. You won't find me. But Ben's a professional slackliner. So if you Google Ben's slackline, his YouTube channel comes oh, up. The first yeah. YouTube, the first YouTube video that comes up is like, um, like the TV show found that I was secretly recording them. I think it's like titled it. <laughs> <laughs> and then it, it's like an arrow that like points to the like spy camera. And there's a little glasses, like spy camera in my glasses in the thumbnail. And it's like, ah, okay. But, they, but, uh, they got me. But, but when they kicked this out, we're not breaking character. We're not going to let the cult win. So basically when they took my glasses, I was like, I go, so you're telling me my doctor's spying on me? Cause I told them my doctor gave me those glasses for my lazy eye. So I was staying in character. I mean, Ben, you kind of really, they, they caught you. So basically yeah. you could just be like, yeah, that was a bad time in my life, but I regret it. I'm not like that anymore. And uh, basically how I ended it is I'm going to come back and prove my innocence because they didn't know I had a YouTube channel. Yeah. And so that's what I did. I went back and proved my innocence. Ben told me to blame everything on him. I said, Ben manipulated me. He paid off a doctor to say that for my glasses. I said, Ben, <laughs> I said, ben works for the FBI's. Not, oh, not, yeah. not, not FBI because it's illegal to do that. It's a felony. Yeah. And so FBI's with an S not illegal and uh their face just drops because it sounds like fbi and uh because they were in investigated by the fbi so i wanted to freak them out and uh basically i just told them that and they they accepted it and but they just said if i come back they'll call the cops so, so then they showed back up again and the cops came yeah yeah that, that's about the end of the story yeah but one. basically we got kicked out of san diego but we're st we're not gonna let the cult win we're like they caught us we got a bunch of footage and a bunch of blackmail on them but we're still not done because we basically want to take this cult down. Yeah. Like we see something wrong and we, we feel like we want to get even more evidence on the child abuse to take them down. And so I was like, Ben, dude, they're not going to see us coming. This cult's called the 12 tribes, meaning 12 locations. Yeah, you have 11 more to go. Yeah, That's ben, what it sounds ben, like. Ben. I was wondering how they looked you up, though, if they're not allowed to use that type of technology. Uh, so they're allowed to use the Internet for like tax reasons, I think, um, and like financial reasons. But they, they don't just surf the web. But like, if they have to look something up, like if someone's infiltrating them, like it would be a sin for them not to look it up probably, you know, and just like, let me keep infiltrating and take them down. Cause like, if we kept doing it, like who knows, maybe they're not going to do their group suicide anymore. You know, that would be detrimental to them. But, um, so the, our, our next like four episodes, we ended up flying to Colorado to re-infiltrate the cult with fake names and fake backstories. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> I'm Harry, but I go by Papa H. And I'm a TikTok oh, star yeah. with over 3 million followers because that's going to, we basically were trolling them. They're going to hate me. And Ben's going to be the character that's, Ben goes by Bob. And Bob is racist, homophobic. And he's yeah. basically, the cult's going to love Bob, but they're going to hate me. And we're basically just going to like, uh, I'm going to disagree with what Bob believes. And then they're, they're going to hate me. And we're just going to try to get their reactions that way. But uh, yeah, we went to Colorado and re-infiltrated the cult. And I actually have a question for you guys. So something that someone was telling us is that if you, in California, coding, according to like some penal, I think it's called like penal code 798 or something, uh, which is squatter's rights. If you squat in the area for more than three days, the owner has to give you a 30-day notice to leave, right? Before they can legally evict you. So someone was saying like, it was illegal for them to just say you had to leave. They had to give you a 30-day notice. Oh, so that's a good point. So yeah. we tried going back and, and using that, but the sheriffs came and said, oh, well, because you waited like so and so many months before coming back, now like a grace period's gone and like you would have to stay there again before they could give you a 30-day notice. So I know you guys aren't lawyers, but like you guys are college dropouts. Uh, you guys <laughs> Basically um, the same thing. What if we, so they have a 68 acre farm and there's a lot of woods on that farm that we could hide and they would never know that we're there. So if we hide there for three days, uh, do you think that now we get our three days back, they have to give us a 30 day notice to leave. Could we just stay there and keep the series going for 30 more days? Or? I, I mean, you know, I've never infiltrated a cult, so this is probably not the best to ask. Neither have I, but to me, that sounds pretty sound. You know, it sounds that, pretty sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sounds pretty sound. And I'm down to do it, dude. Are, I mean, are you not worried easy. about them harming you at all? I mean, if we're, I don't know. And then also the thing is, is like, then if that's like now our property, if that's, if we're living there legally for 30 days, like we can legally just, 
we don't even have to use the spy camera glasses. We can just film like normally. And, and, uh, I mean, it's not illegal to film on your own property, right? If we're like living there legally for 30 days, you know, I have I, no idea. I do. So I think legally it, it, it seems legit, you know, uh -huh. cause you're, you're squatting on there and they have to give you the 30 day notice. I, I kind of agree where, with Zach is coming from, uh, with the harming situation. Cause then, at that point, I feel like they, you know, they catch you and they're like, this is probably not their first rodeo uh -huh. with people trying to infiltrate them. So they just kick you out. But if you keep going back and trying to piss them off, that's when I feel like we're not trying to piss them off. We're just trying, trying to find out information yeah, about every them. But every time they, we they could take it as you're trying to uh, well, instigate. I, things. I guess that's just a risk that we're willing to take to get the, the craziest content ever, you, you know, know yeah. to each their own. You know, I'm going to sit back in, uh, you know, in my bed and watch the content. What they but say is with great risk comes great reward. That's very true. No, uh, no one ever accomplished anything great by staying inside their comfort zone, right? Exactly. Maybe you guys should take Jared with you. Look at him. He looks culty. Uh uh. <laughs> no. You wouldn't want to come with us? No, dude, we can take I, dude, him on the I final would, stunt. I would crack under pressure so easily. Definitely take really? Jared to the cold. <laughs> well, that, would, that, that makes good footage sometimes because then people say, oh, you could be like the, you could be playing the role of the audience if that makes sense. Because people, you're relatable to an audience member. So they see you come in the cult and they're like, oh, well, he cracks. And now that makes us look like professionals at that point. You know what I mean? Because they're like, oh, yeah. like, uh, like now it puts some perspective into how hard infiltrating cults is. I, I can tell you just Jared's from, down. <laughs> no, 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 I can tell you just from listening to the story, it sounds pretty difficult. <laughs> so now you're are you currently in any cult right now no not right now um we were thinking about some other cults we could infiltrate which kind of sucks is like with like technology like the the invention of the internet has uh killed most cults uh, i think once you look at like scientology and even this cult i remember looking it's like scientology every year is growing 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 because people just don't know any better they they get their source from the cult and they have no other sources to check then the invention of the internet comes out and like the the population of cults just plummet really? and uh yeah cuz now like you can like you can look up like what is 12 tribes on the internet? Yeah. You can look up what is Scientology and you can see what's actually going on. And uh, with the invention of the internet, a lot of cults have actually like been dying out. But sometimes, I mean, that's why most cults or every cult you join now is you know, the first thing they tell you is stay off the internet. Like the internet's evil. You know, like they would always that's tell Satan. us that. Like, yeah. like uh, they put you to work and they like, you can't be on your cell phone. Like being on your cell phone was a sin at this cult, you know, and because they don't want you on the internet. Yeah. And uh, same with Scientology. They said, they literally say like, don't like straight up they say don't look up anything about Scientology because you're only going to find it lies about us you know mm. and they're like if you read it then you're only reading lies so don't read it how convenient it's only lies on the internet yeah. how long were you guys in Colorado for uh, <laughs> about three days which, okay. which is <laughs> funny we so didn't I'll last that this. long so I walk in we go in as fake personas right because they know who we are at this point so we walk in. Wait, wait, wait. Before this, we're practicing our fake backstories right across the street, our fake names. I'm Papa H. He's Bob. We brought Lydia. She went by Logan. Yeah. Ben so had... We, wait, ben so, had so wait, wait, wait. So we, so we walk in. Uh, you're going to spoil this. Uh, no, I'm just so, going to say you had one job. That's it. We had lots of jobs. We had to make sure they didn't find out who we were. But that was the main job. Yeah, and, that's what I'm talking about. And we walk in, right? And I'm like, we're walking. There's no one there. And we're like, what the heck? And so I'm like starting to get nervous. So I'm like, where is everyone? So I guess I just started thinking about other things. And then finally we see someone. I'm like, hey, what's up? I'm Ben. And then <laughs> the, guy's like, the guy's like, what? You're Ben? I'm like, no, I mean Bob. And he's like, wait, I thought you said your name was Ben. And I was like, oh, yeah, Ben. That, that's my middle name. Uh, but I go by Bob. And then, and then the guy's like, whoa. And then at first they don't even let us stay there because they're like, it's and we They're, show up on a Friday night, which is like when you're supposed to show up, I guess. And they, I think they were kind of doing like some like private thing, maybe also with like just them. But uh, they're like, don't show up. And maybe they're like looking up who we are and stuff. And we're like, well, we flew out to Colorado for nothing. I guess this was game over. I just messed up. It was like probably my biggest blunder I've ever done on YouTube, I think. Uh, you guys got to go to the Tennessee chapter. Yeah. The but, hub. But they actually ended up inviting us back. We stayed for three days, which was yeah. crazy. Um, but yeah, I was yeah. so nervous spending look because that was my first time spending the night because I was going home each night in San Diego. Yeah, we somehow saved it. Uh, yeah, <laughs> and we were, dude, we, we, it gets good. Like on our next episode, like we have one on one conversations with our bunkmate, and uh, dude, this guy hated me because like I was the guy that was opposite from the Colt, and yeah. we were going back and forth. Like it gets really good. That's really cool. Yeah, we're excited so, to see it. Yeah, you don't have to spoil anything, but like, what was? Were there any? Um, I guess uh, like cultural differences between the San Diego cult and the, the Colorado location. 
Like, so the Colorado one only had a yellow deli. They didn't have a farm. So they seemed more intelligent, if that makes sense, because gotcha. they're talking to people from the outside world more often, okay. where the people at the farm were enclosed by themselves at the farm. So they don't really know how things work. Yeah, they were like so, isolated. So it was easier to like try and fool them, where at the Colorado location, they, they know how the outside society works. So if I'm just agreeing with everything they say, they might be like, well, this is sketchy. People from the outside world don't normally just agree with everything we say. They usually question us, you know? Yeah. So like these guys, so they were able to catch on to like smaller things like that with us. Gotcha. And that's why we only lasted three days there instead of the three weeks in, yeah. in uh, California where, I mean, I feel like our performance was pretty much the same. I know. I feel like we got still really good footage in Colorado. Yeah. I'm stoked with it. What, yeah. what part of Colorado? Boulder. Boulder. It really? was the one that did the fire that you guys were okay, talking yeah, about. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they actually talked about it. I, I, dude, I was actually editing the other day. I found them talking about it. Oh, nice. Whoa. Maybe we're gonna find out who started the fire once and for all because it's not like 100 percent confirmed it's them. Yeah, it's kind of like up in the air. Everyone just blames it on them, which I mean, it probably was them, but there's no like solid proof it was them. Yeah, so we, we're, we're, we're maybe we have the proof. Maybe we, we gotta go through the footage, I guess, and see. Yeah, I mean, we're in Uber Uber to the Colt um, one of the days. Um, and our Uber driver was telling us that like everyone pretty much that knows about them, like doesn't like them because they, everyone thinks they started the fire. 12, 12 tribes started the fire. Uh, it was uh, always uh, burning. Uh, since <laughs> the world's been turning. Well, this has been lovely guys. I don't know if there's anything we didn't cover or anything you guys want to talk about, but I think this is a great, you know, overview of kind of the crazy lives you live in and infiltrating. Um, where, where can people watch the series? Danny Burke on YouTube and reckless Ben. Oh. Yeah, and that too. Right. <laughs> Ben's channel has the Scientology, uh, like infiltration. I guess oh, if, yeah. if that's what you want to call it. Danny's has the uh, the the twelve tribes. Um, no, so, well, no, well, no. Ben has tw uh, twelve tribes as well. Oh, you do have twelve yeah, tribes so we're, as well. We're basically posting uh, the episodes on both of our channels, but gotcha. but like from different perspectives. Like, oh, interesting. When Ben was uh, at the cult, he was living there for three weeks. So, like, I had parts where I was going home each night and uploading all the spy footage. Like, maybe I put stuff in my video that yeah. Ben didn't put in his video. Like stuff like that. Gotcha. Oh, very cool. Hell yeah. yeah. Well, you know, thank you guys so much for coming on and and kind of divulging the story. I think it's going to be really interesting and our viewers are really going to, you know, yeah, no, love thanks for hearing series. it out. This was fascinating. Dude, thanks like, for inviting us on. I always watch this podcast. I get distracted. <laughs> I'm like editing and then I watch your podcast and I can't edit. It's too well, good. Hopefully you had a good time. Dude, I'm <laughs> loving it. I mean, Ben spilled his water, but I, I didn't. Immediately? I'm, I'm, I'm loving life. <laughs> we spill more water? No, yeah, yeah. We're definitely yeah, spilling more water. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah, part yeah. of that's part of all our cult initiation. So oh, nice. <laughs> um, well, thank you guys so much. Uh, if you stay till the end, you know, make sure to check out these guys and, and let me know what series or what episode was your favorite. And uh, with that said, their ads will be on the screen. And and uh, what are your Instagrams as well? So it's easy to place. Oh, them just at Reckless Ben Schneider. Perfect. Uh, Danny, Danny Burke, B-E-R-K. Hell yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys. And thank you guys for coming on. We really appreciate it. Yeah. Thank oh, you. Dude. Thanks. Yeah. Stoked. It's, it's a mouth. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to get some thumbnails. Oh, what? Oh. Don't talk during the outro. It's okay. People need to know we're getting thumbnails. Oh, wait, wait. Is it still recording? Oh, it's still yeah, on? Yeah, it is still on. Oh, nice. Is this going to be? Is this gonna make the cut? Yeah, 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 yeah. Why not? Oh, what's up? Shout out to my mom. Shout out to my dad. Shout out to, to grandma. Uh, who else can we shout dude, out? Shout Danny? out to my puppy, Winston. Dude. Shout out to Danny's puppy, grandpa? Winston. Uh, no, he doesn't deserve a shout out. Okay. <laughs> Makes sense. No, yeah. Shout out to my grandpa. Yeah, I thought about it. Yeah, he deserves a shout out. Okay, yeah. thank goodness. Well, I have two grandpas, so shout out to my other grandpa too. <laughs> okay, but not your other grandma. She's dead. Sorry. Oh, she still deserves a shout out. She yeah, shout out to her. Life. Yeah, shout out to other grandma. Wait, shout out to wait, wait, wait. Shout, shout out to Dropouts Podcast. Dropouts I know you guys are already. You guys, well, you guys are already like they already know who you guys are, but like probably most of them are subscribed, right? Yeah, they, yeah. Um, yeah, and like it's actually a thing. If you tell your subscribers to subscribe, they're more likely to subscribe. It's stupid. It's like it's like they should already know to subscribe. But if you tell them, they're actually more likely to do it. <laughs> if they hear it from me too, they're more likely to do it because it's from an unbiased source. No, you're biased. Oh yeah, because I just got out. You're right, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm done. Ben's having too much fun, dude.